All right, let's continue on. G, GMD, A1. Uh, this is worksheet three, the development of the formula for a triangle. Most students know the formula of a triangle. Obviously, this is early objective stuff, earlier um, common core objectives in like eighth or earlier grades. But again, I felt it just essential to cover a good basis of this on our way through the geometric measurement and dimension unit. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of different looking types of triangles. I want to just talk about how they come to fit within the formula. Um, again, remember the nice thing is we started with this rectangle and its formula comes easy. Uh, the formula is just base times height. Because everything is um, perpendicular, it creates all those beautiful squares and we just count them all up and we found out that multiplication does that quickly. So here, <coughs> uh, I think you know the idea that the triangle is half of a rectangle, which is the, the premise. So if we were to enclose this, um, this triangle that we have, this one here, in this rectangle, you can see it's exactly half. This is a, a diagonal, cuts it into two congruent parts. We could establish that. So this, uh, which would have a height here, a height and a base, um, would calculate all of the region, base times height, because we know a rectangle does that. And so we are only half of that. So our formula is half the rectangle's base times height. So half of the area of a rectangle. Now does that work in all cases? So does it work over here? And sure enough, it does as well. Um, and how it works over here is there's the rectangle. Um, you'll notice this height here creates uh, equality here and here and equality here and here. So there are actually, you can think of it as this rectangle is cut in half by that triangle, this rectangle is cut in half by that triangle. It's exactly half of BH here. This one's a little more interesting and I'll show it a little bit uh, more easier under the Elmo here in a minute. But, um, first of all, the height of this kind of triangle, if you're calling this your base, your height actually is outside of the triangle. Um, that's kind of an interesting thing for students to understand, uh, that they often think that it has to be perpendicular to the base, meaning touch the base. That isn't true. Um, it has to be perpendicular to that base, and the perpendicular height to that base is way over here because that has to be perpendicular to this. And so the height can be um, physically a side, it can be inside, or it even can be outside. So where's the triangle that we are, or sort of the rectangle that we're half of? It's actually right here. It would be a, tri it would be a rectangle with the same base and the same height, so it would be this one. Now it is a lot harder for you and I to understand how that triangle is half of that rectangle. I'll show what's called the shearing process under the Elmo here in a minute. But the idea of that is that we're going to slide that point along a parallel line. And in doing that, we don't change area because the base would be locked in. The height would be locked in by moving parallel. And we're going to change the shape of this to be this one. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's a very cool process called shearing. Let's take a look and do a, a couple repeats of these ideas. So we saw how we came up with a formula for a parallelogram based off of the rectangle. We do the same thing in a triangle's case. We, we come to know the triangle's formula because we know the rectangles. So let's just go through a couple of uh, triangles and show you how we come up with the idea. This triangle, it's very easy to create the rectangle that would enclose that. And so uh, to do that, we would put it in there. And you can see that because that it goes on its diagonal here, it's right angled here, that this is exactly half of that rectangle area. And so we would see it would be one half base times height, because base times height would gather the entire region. Um, we don't want the entire region, we just want half of it, so half of BH. So you say, well, where's the rectangle that encloses this? Well, there would be one here if we do 
perpendicular lines here and a parallel one to that side there. Okay, so, well, okay, there's the rectangle, but how do we establish that that's half? Well, this little region here, I'll call it region one, is exactly the same as that region there. You can see kind of its having of that rectangle. And over here, you can see that, again, this region here is the same as this. So there's two one regions, two two regions, and the triangle is a one and a two region, so it's exactly half of that rectangle. Which, in other words, is one half base times height. Base times height would be the whole region. We only want half of that. So getting even more trickier is um, how is this triangle half of a rectangle? Now this is a little more interesting. Um, the rectangle most people want to do is this one out here. I'm not going to create that one. I'm going to say it's half of this rectangle. Now, <clears throat> because there's the base, there's the same height, my claim is it's half of this. Now this is harder to tell because it sticks out beyond there. This is where we're going to use our friend shearing. So here we are outside right now of the rectangle I claim that we want to be half of, which is this one. So using shearing, which is to slide along a uh, parallel plane there uh, to that base, I can slide it along until I get stopped perpendicularly. And so now you can see I stopped right when it was perpendicular. And now I didn't change the base, and I didn't change the height, so the area maintains itself. And now I can see it's exactly half. Or even in this case, I could have kept sliding uh, so that it would be easy to show that, again, that it's half of it. So using that ability to, um, to shear would allow me to drop that triangle exactly into halfway point and so now again I'm using an older argument to establish it's half the size. So that's where the triangle formula comes from. It's half of a, a rectangle. Exactly half of a rectangle. Let's take a look at how to use it now that we've... Uh, oh I know actually we wanted to show you a couple other ways to do this. So that, that technique of explaining where the formula comes from is called shearing. Here's another way to explain it. Um, that here is uh, our triangle and we could dissect it so let's do this let's cut it if we had a pair of scissors we'd cut it like this this piece would actually drop perfectly right there and form a rectangle now you and i know how to calculate the area of a rectangle whatever the area of this rectangle is it's the area of that original triangle which is the base times the height now this height is half of the original height. There it is, one half bh. Again, there it is. Let's try this one. Um, I could do the same thing. I'm going to cut this. This would rotate nicely into this spot. This would rotate nicely into this spot. And again, there's my triangle forming area wise a rectangle that has the formula of base times half of the height. That's cool. I love this stuff. Here, let's do it another way. One, two, three, four, five. Um, let's see, what do they want me to do here? I think I could do it like this if I wanted to. Let me cut, cut it going this way this time. This would slide into this spot. And I would get a new rectangle that's two and a half by three. Um, and actually, we're not using numbers, so let me do it differently. This would be half of my base, and I kept my height the same. So if I do half of my base times my height, I get one half bh again. Very cool stuff. So dissection, shearing, these are all different ways to come about the values. Let me now quickly do some solving. This would just be one half, nine times five, multiply that out again it would be centimeters squared um, base times height bases and heights have to be perpendicular here this is cool we've got a 60 degree angle so this is a 30 60 90 uh, we would have to divide 12 by root 3 which ends up being 4 root 3 when you simplify it 
and uh, now I have my base and my height. And I don't care who's the base and who's the height here. If it's perpendicular, one can be the base and one can be the height or vice versa, divided by 2. So I get 6 times 4 is 24 root 3 centimeters squared would be the exact answer there. Here, uh, I'm missing, I have a base, or I'm missing a height, but I know the Pythagorean theorem could help me out here. And I'm starting to get to know some of these, 5, 12, uh, 13, so 5 times 12 is 60, divided by 2 is 30. Nice little problem there. Um, <clears throat> this says dissect it to find the area. So again, you could uh, cut this little piece, rotate it around into this spot, take this little piece, cut it, and put it into there. You can just find that one, two, three, four, five, times two. This has ten centimeters or units, whatever these are. All right, so you can cut up these things and move them around. This wants us to shear it. Ooh, this is cool. So to shear in a triangle's case, I'm going to lock in um, a side. In this case, I'm going to lock this side in. And I'm going to shear its other vertex in a parallel manner. So I'm going to shear again. And I'll, I'll highlight both of them so you can see they're parallel. But I'm going to shear it parallel. And I'm going to land here. The reason I'm going to do this is that um, it creates a nice horizontal line. And uh, those make finding the area much easier. So here I'm able to create um, <clears throat> an environment where now I've just changed the shape quite drastically of uh, my triangle. But I sheared it in a manner that it kept the base the same and the height the same. So now the new triangle I can calculate. And if you notice, I now know that this has a horizontal distance of 1, 2, 3, 4. And its height, it perpendicular to that, is, of course, 1. So 4 times 1 is 4, divided by that is 2 centimeters uh, squared. Because 1, 2, 3, 4 times 1 is 4, divided by 2. Uh, let me show you another example here. Uh, let's see. Again, I, I'm, I like to shear to form, uh, and again, I'm going to create both these shear lines so you can see that I'm going to move parallel. And there's many ways to do this, so don't assume I'm doing the only way, but I'm going to move this point along this line, and I'm going to stop right here. And again, the reason I'm going to stop there is that it creates a place where I have a horizontal line, just like the last one. And then I have this new triangle here with the same base and the same height. I'm now going to notice that this is 3 going this way. The height is 1. 3 times 1 divided by 2 is 1.5 centimeters. Shearing is kind of a cool technique. 